0.09% in October. Nigeria Economic Summit fuel subsidy to end in 2023, says Finance Minister, and Asia-Pacific markets mostly lower as second day of G20 underway. Plus, oil prices steady as China COVID worries outweigh supply concerns. This is Business Express on a network service of the NTA, and we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. Glad to have you join us at this time when we talk business. I will start by telling you that conversations on redoubling efforts towards women empowerment take center stage at the Gender and Inclusion Summit organized by the Policy Innovation Center of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group in Abuja with the theme Connecting the Dots for Gender Inclusive Society. Speakers push for women participation in all economic ventures and advocate protection for the girl child. Depends on harnessing the economic power and equality of women and girls, and Nigeria has not yet reached that potential. By 2025, 85 percent of all external activities of the European Union should contribute to gender equality and women's empowerment. We continue to support Nigerian women in their efforts to have greater productivity, economic diversification, and income equality. When there is equal access to resources and opportunities, and when gender-sensitive policies are tailored to the needs of all, that is when we can say for sure that we live in an equal society. Still on conversations at the Economic Summit, vote for the candidate of your choice. That is the message of President Mahmoud Bari to the closing of the 28th edition of the Nigerian Economic Summit, laying credence to his commitment for continuous reforms in the public sector. Liaka Tumbaba today reports that the president was represented by his chief of staff, Professor Ibrahim Gambari. Because uh, uh, any concentration of people that will be the third largest in the world cannot be ignored. So we can no longer be, we cannot be ignored. But at the same time, we have to plan, we have to grow the economy, we have to diversify the economy in ways that will make it possible for our people at that time to have the benefit of all the resources that the Almighty has bestowed on this country. Global population has peaked at 8 million and Nigeria is projected to rank third most populous nation after India and China by the year 2050. Planning for inclusive growth and development is crucial and for President Muhammad Buhari, getting the fundamentals right is a priority for his administration. Declaring the 28th edition of the Nigeria Economic Summit close, Professor Ibrahim Gambari assured participants of the President's resolve to leave Nigeria were better than how he met it by securing, growing and diversifying the economy. Apart from emphasizing the process of choosing our leaders through free and fair credible elections to which President Barry is committed, leadership, yes, but we must not forget that to move 
a country forward to, uh, to uh, promote shared prosperity, which is the theme of this uh, year's summit. We also need shared understanding. We have to also develop shared responsibility and above all, shared commitment. As the curtains draw, outcomes from sessions have been compiled and will be presented to the Federal Executive Council in Abuja. And the Nigerian Economic Summit may have come and gone. Conversation on issues that dominated the summit will continue as the group sets economic priorities for presidential candidates. And joining me to make assessment of the summit and what it means for Nigeria's shared prosperity is Jayola, is Laoye Jayola, he's the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Economic Summit. Sir, so you're welcome to Business Express. Thank you, Benny, for having me. Good. It's been two days of intense engagement, and I remember seeing you earlier on at the, the, the inclusion and dialogue. Well, I think conversations are ongoing. How best would you describe what has happened in these two days? Well, again, you, you know that we've been, this is our 28th summit. And generally, it's a platform for us to have a dialogue and build a what we call a national consensus between both the private sector, civil society, and government. And of course, this year, our theme is 2023 and beyond. We're not saying that what is remaining of this administration is important. But again, to be able to put in a form to uh, 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 what is important for whoever is intending to come in at whatever level, whether at a federal level or at the state level, subliminal level, the challenges that stands before them and we need to address. And so we've had a dialogue and the entire participants have come to what they call a, a consensus that need to be addressed by everybody. So. For us at the NASG, it's a dialogue that is continuing. And once this is concluded, we will then begin to engage the stakeholders. And so we have a basis to say this is representative of what Nigerians are saying. So we're happy that most of all of most of the people turned up. We're happy that we have a very, very inclusive uh, dialogue. But then for us, we need to continue the advocacy to ensure that all that needs to understand and hear have a commitment to take the issues forward. Because unless we begin to build a nation where we have shared prosperity, then we'll be in problems. As it is, there's a lot of what the generality of the people consider to be unequal access, not to fair access. And despite the fact that Nigeria has prosperity and the, I mean, the potentials of being a very prosperous nation, the ingredient of making it a shared one is missing, and every one of us have a responsibility to address that sooner rather than later. I get talking about the ingredients needed for this shared prosperity to become a, a reality. This is the 28th edition, and usually recommendations come afterwards. What are the key recommendations, particularly at this period of transition? Well, you realize the fact that even in curating this summit, there's four key platforms, issues that we brought up for discussion. We need to design some macroeconomic stability. It's very, very important. Unless we have a macroeconomic stability, in fact, it will be difficult to see what is left for even those who are coming to inherit. It, to inherit. You agree with me that even when the 2023 budget was released, the government itself said we're going to have significant level of deficit funding and yeah. they're going to raise uh, money, which will add to a very high stock of def deficit. And we'll believe that, I mean, if you don't tackle those issues, we're going to have a problem. You recall that last year, we, we talked about the urgency of the now, we're talking about the need to secure in our future. So it's not that we're saying security is not important, it's very, very important because if there is no security, we all can even discuss whatever it is we need to discuss. But one major thing is we need to design a monetary economy that is stable. For instance, there's a general consensus at a meeting that, look, this subsidy thing we're talking about is not feasible. It's not sustainable. 
And you can imagine how if we deal with a five trillion that is budgeted, that goes to subsidizing the likes of me and you, some of us, most of us that are in, in, in Abuja and Lagos, when research has been done that has shown that the very, very poor only are affected by 4%. How do we begin to address that? It's not sustainable. The money is not even there. We're borrowing money to do the subsidy. So we need to deal with the issue of subsidy rightly and very quickly. Otherwise, before we get to 2023, and, and may, I mean, after the election, it's going to be much more problem. Secondly, we believe that we need to deal with the issue of multiple exchange rate. It's not sustainable. For us, it is revenue that is filtering and going off. And lastly, oh, I mean, again, I will not say lastly, in the, area of, in the area of economic stability, we're looking at how do you deal with uh, the theft that we're seeing around our oil area, you know, I mean, we don't have many. Our quota is 1.8 million barrels per day, which we were doing below 1 million until recently. So it means even the opportunity of disabled, we're not harnessing it. So we can't secure property. We can't even secure our oil. So those are one of the issues. And of course, inflation. I mean, I mean, we know we're doing above 21% and we need to deal with it. It. And food inflation, it's very, very high. So we dealt with that. So the issues around that, that we conclude, how do we deal with this macroeconomic stability? And then you'll recall very clearly that it's about taking the tough decisions. Then we talk about investing in our future. And we looked at all the issues about our future. And, and very clearly, if you don't have the human capital, if you don't deal with the issue about human capital and social safety, we're going to deal with it. And of course, the issue around investment and in infrastructure. And so we deal with investing in our future. And of course, we then looked at beyond investing in our future, how do we then deal with issues around um, around uh, even transitioning? You know, I mean, it's clear to us that the way that leadership emerges in Nigeria. It's something that we need to take seriously. So that at the end of the day, we don't just want to throw at us. We need to begin to make deliberate effort to develop how leadership emerges in the country. It's not something that we just we just, just take for granted. As it is, we dealt whatever we're dealt with, we take it and we move away with it. So those are a number of issues that we looked at. And around okay. those okay. things we have general issues okay. as to what we Okay. Well, some of these issues you raise are about exactly the issues we that, that we actually discussed last year. And we're talking about the urgency of implementing these issues, talking about the macroeconomic environment, improving on it. Fuel subsidy was actually a key recommendation. And then, then multiple exchange rate, yes, is much more prominent now. My question is, what is the level of engagement with policy makers for the implementation of these recommendations? Well, there's always, an, I mean, again, there's always engagement. There's always engagement. And our, you know, our work is to bring this to fore and to discuss these issues, to continue to reiterate the need to do that. And on our way, bring about what we think can be done. But you agree with me that implementation is not us, which is why one key area we discuss is how do we begin to unlock the bottlenecks around implementation? And critical around that is about, unless we begin to have a, sanctions where people do not, there are clear KPIs and what need to be done, and when people do not meet those KPIs, how do we sanction them? It was clear to us again that we need to have a fit and proper civil service that are well remunerated. It's one thing for us to say the civil service is not working very well. But to what extent are they adequately remunerated? I'm talking about not only civil service, civil service and even public service entirely. So we need to begin to retain them as well. So we're saying remove the bottlenecks. And thirdly, we didn't agree for all that government's role is just to enable businesses. Sure. Therefore, there are so many things that government is taking up that ordinarily government should just free up and create the environment to work. So part of the key pillars and issues we discussed is about removing this button. But on top of it all, it's about the political will to take the top decision. And if I take you back, and, and you say these things are repeated, uh, as far back as 2015, when we identified three scenarios that we believe 
could emerge. I would say tough choices. The need for government to take these tough decisions. And we did say that as long as we don't take the tough decisions, we're going to have to elect it. We projected that we may even go to recession of 2016 quite earlier. And it did happen. And it happened. And what we have seen is that we've been sketching around taking those tough decisions. And as long as we delay, it's been creating problems over and abroad. And then those problems are getting wider and a lot. So today we're dealing with the issue of insecurity. We're dealing with the issue of climate change that are becoming very, 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 very critical. And that's why it's not about engagement, we're engaging. But about implementation, you agree with us that we can't. And we come alongside. For instance, when the National Development Plan was being done, the entire private sector came in to say, what can we do about it? What support is doing for us? But you need, there's a willingness on our part, there's a willingness on the part of society to ensure that we will work with government. Because we don't have any nation but this one that we call our own. But how do we do that? There has to be a will on the part of those charged with responsibility to implement. And, I'm, and we're not talking about federal, either. we're talking about even federal and subnational. We engage with the subnational regular, regularly, we engage with the regulator regularly, but the will to work is a problem. Maybe time has come for us to begin to look at how we design all this in, in the area of implementation. Maybe it's a political structure and the things that we're working on that is wrong. We found out that the four year, for instance, that government have, they send the first one year to settle down, to know what is it to be done. When they settle down about one year, they do, they, they okay, no, these are the programs we want to do. The next one year, they are beginning to look at how do we come back. And, and so there's a lot of problems. So implementation, implementation is implementation. the problem. But the, the challenge is that Nigerians don't, then we're not bereft of policies and what we need to do. But how do we work at it? The choice of leaders, the way we prepare our leaders, and uh, and the fact that we take the bold decisions, it's, it's, it's important. So those are the things that it came. So you're going to see us repeat quite a number of things. At the NESG, part of the thing is that unless and until we do what you need to do, and it's important, we always bring it forward. So some of this thing might, might appear repetitive, but the challenges that we face today, and yeah. we're going to trade them away. They are, they, are, they are a reality. Well, before, surely before I let you go, we, we, we're talking about um, where we should go from now. This administration, the sun is setting on this administration. The next administration is expected. Elections are around the corner. Yes, you've mentioned some of these issues, the challenges, and the way we need to go. Can you just briefly tell me what do you expect? What are the likely priority areas you think the next administration should hit the ground running with when they come in? Very clearly. For instance, the first thing, you see, we, we, we can't talk, stop talking about security, security, security. The environment needs to be secured before we can do business, before people can leave, right? The second thing is I wanted to fix our macroeconomic environment. Unless there is stability, right? And there is stability, and there is stability. You're not going to get investment in our environment, whether local or foreign. Okay. So we need to sort it out. Because one of the things that investors need to do is to see that they work in a stable environment. And that is not available now. They need to work about, you know, human capital issues. I mean, so we, we, we've identified those areas. So there are sector and, and job, job, jobs. It is clear yeah. that are sectors, that are sectors that have the... The, 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 last, the, 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 the kind of what they have is how they can grow jobs. And government need to do that. I tell people, the MSMEs are the largest employers of labor. But they work in an environment, no matter what we say, that is tough for them to operate. So no power. And what do we do around power? And so, you know, there are short-term measures, there are medium-term measures, longer-term measures. And we need to begin to work on those. So let them give power, electricity, I mean, energy, let us begin to work on our MSMEs and realize that, look, we're not overtaxing them and we're not doing more. And we're making the environment easier for them. And even take your agriculture and do a backward integration. If you can increase the yield, the farm practices that the smallholder farmer does, you then realize that poverty will be removed. But security is important. Monetary stability is important. Key infrastructures around power, we need to rethink the way we do our education. It was very clear. 
that were using an education that was fit for the colonial administration still now. We need to change it. And, and that's why you saw the engagement we had, even with uh, both the technical institution and the technical, the technical people, that things need to be changed. Uh, Nigeria worry about the fact that Nigerians are leaving, and data shows that only about 0 0.7, 0 0.7, not even a percentage of our people are leaving. But what's the problem? Because we're not prepared those left behind that can take over the problem and uh, the position that have been left behind. How do we ensure that we have the right skills and the right job files so that when people leave, other people step in? After all, we're going to be the third most populous uh, nation. But are we going to train people to make them a blessing or we're leaving them now to be a, a, a problem for us? Unless and until we act, the challenges we are facing now will just be uh, a, a child play, and, and that's it. So, so it's still an urgency to act now, and we're engaging the, 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 the key contenders to say, look, these issues are real, and unless and until you address them, there ain't any way going forward. Wow. Awesome. Thank you so very much, Laoye Jayola, for sharing your thoughts with us at this particular point in time. And I would say NAS28 was actually a robust discussion platform and a success. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Benny, for having me. Thank you. And moving on, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zen Abamet, says the ministry will dialogue with the Central Bank of Nigeria to agree on concerns raised by the Nigeria Governors Forum that include debits from source unremitted debits and denomination of inflows. She said this position known, she made its position known when the forum paid her a visit led by its chairman, Governor Aminu Tambwal of Sakoto State. Translation of all related debit entries in the Federal Government of Nigeria Territory could account for the period of January 2006 to December 2021. Our consultants have reviewed the account and submitted the report which was forwarded to uh, the Governor of Central Bank two weeks ago. We request uh, that this report be reviewed at FAC and claims returned to the Federation account for disbursement to all tests. We uh, represent the issue of reduction of consultancy fee at source. Of course, we have uh, pending issues on SEBA and SIFTAS, uh, SEBA uh, program for result. Uh, we wish to know the status of financing agreement and meeting with effect, uh, the effectiveness conditions. We need to talk about basis or denomination in the subsidiary agreement to be signed eventually by states, Naira or dollar. If Naira, the, we need to state that it must be an ex at an exchange rate and loan tenure agreeable to the states. And what we have uh, decided is to just pay to the states what is due to the states and then the states take responsibility for their uh, consultancies. So whatever is due to you, we'll pay it in full and then you sort out your consultancy. And then on the basis of the denomination of inflows relating to states, whether it is SEVA or SIFTES, uh, I do agree that there's a need to have an engagement with the central bank um, so that we have an agreement and uh, we have an understanding of what the application is and also where the states do not agree with the application will be able to provide the alternative. This is coming 24 hours after disclosure that the last tranche of state's fiscal transparency, accountability and sustainability SIFTAS program for results, $1.5 billion payments was made. One billion Naira withheld by the CBN through Naira exchange deficit is also inclusive in the payments expected to be made in the coming weeks. Let's now take a trip and see how the markets are doing globally. Hello and welcome to the Global Market Review. Shares in the Asia-Pacific were mostly lower on Wednesday as world leaders gathered in Bali, Indonesia, for a second day of the Group of 20 Summit. The Nikkei 225 in Japan reversed earlier losses to close 0.14 percent at 28,028.30, while the Shanghai Composite depreciated 0.4 
0.45% at 3,119.98 and the Hansen index also dipped 0.47% across 18,256 points for it. European markets were lower on Wednesday as political instability gripped the region. DAX dipped 0.67%. KEK 0.23%, while the FTSE rose 0.06%. Stock futures in the United States rose Wednesday as investors weighed another lighter than expected inflation report and looked ahead to retail sales data. Futures tied to the Dow Jones Industrial Average added 65 points. S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 also maintained positive ground. African stocks are mostly negative, except Ghana's GSA Composite, which traded marginally positive. And that's the Global Market Review. I am Boss Sede Abel. That makes it a wrap from that Global Update. Business Express returns tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Keep a date with us.